Gedalia Tazartes. French artist Gedalia Tazartes is a nomad. He wanders through music from chant to rhythm, from one voice to another. Tazartes paves the way for the electric and the vocal paths between the musin, psalmody, and the screaming of a rocker. He traces vague landscapes where the mitre of the white clown, the plumes of the sorcerer, the helmet of a cop, and Parisian anhydride collide into polyphonic ceremonies. Hello. Gedalia Tazarte's music is considered by many as unclassifiable. And some people put it into the concrete music category. As we review... His discography, his output, I'm going to, even though I'm a big fan and listen to everything by Cazartes, I'm going to have a difficult time even putting any kind of descriptions to the music. It's just, it's all over the place and it's amazing. I'm going to start chronologically with his first um, recordings um, and show you what I have in my collection, I am missing a few of the rarest of the rares. The things that I don't have, I have represented in fine uh, repressings. The only one, the only exception is the single-sided, I'll have the name later because I can't remember it, a single-sided record that it actually is like a 20, 18, 20-minute 20 thing from extra one of the CDs. So I'm not really missing that music. I'm just missing that one LP. So we could start out with uh, on Cobalt in 1970. Oh, by the way, all his first four records were recorded between 77 and 79. And we'll get into the works box set, which covers that area, uh, era a little bit later. But his first release, Diasporus on Cobalt, <clears throat> not an easy one to to come by. I wouldn't say super rare, but you just, you're not going to stumble onto this at your local record shop in the U.S. I certainly haven't. And I managed to acquire this on Discogs, and I got a pretty darn good price for the condition it's in. White Label Cobalt. Um, It's released in France. And talking about where to get this stuff, um, I've been buying most of it on Discogs, uh, some from third parties on Amazon, and a um, forced exposure is a great site to get. Um, And in some cases, the actual labels still have some in stock. So this was in 79, 2011. uh, Dias released a repressing of Diaspora um, in this color sleeve, diff, totally different artwork, um, 500. I have number 12 of 500, and it comes with uh, a color printed insert with some information on it and the record. is on kind of a tan beige label. Um, The same uh, record label uh, this year, this very year, has released um, in four different versions. You can still get them, I believe, on Dias. Go to their website um, and look for when they have discounts, too. But they released it uh, as black, a black vinyl version, which um, I don't have. Um, it doesn't say how many, whether it was a limited release. I think just about every release is limited to some extent. They didn't, they didn't make 10 million of them. There's a, a, a transparent red, which I think there's like 750. And there's a, a clear, which is only 100 copies made. Looks just like the... Uh, the first Cobalt release, except for with the dais information. So we have the original artwork. Um, and it comes with the um, 
download the MP3 thing. So here is the one of 100 clear diaspora on the 2020 reissue on Dias. Very, very handsome looking record. And of course here is the the white vinyl. There is 400 of these made. That's it. They black, white, clear, and transparent red. Um, same covers. And let's see. to get out of the sleeve on lovely white vinyl with the dais logo on it so uh, although I don't have every single um, there are on discogs there's a couple test pressings I think a test pressing for dais for the reissue and for the slaves reissue um, but I do have the the CD Version of it. I don't have many CD releases yet. Uh, this has a, a bonus track. It's like 15 minutes long. Um, essential. And eventually I will have all of the Tezarte stuff on CD. It's uh, just to let you know, it's the digital stuff is being offered. By, it looks like by the label online if you look at Discogs um, to purchase and also uh, I think you get the picture. Now for uh, representing in my collection the Gedalia Tezarte's first four LPs in addition to the ones I just showed you of Diasporas um, I recently acquired the box Gedalia Tezarte's work 77 to 79 uh, that means all these recordings were made between 77 and 79. It was his first four records. Comes with a bonus 10 inch, e, e, 10 inch record. Uh, but this came out on Vinyl On Demand, 2011, three different versions. A black version, uh, limited. This is a limited, I think that's like 99. This one's limited to 600 numbered copies. And then there's a different one with a DVD. Um, I think the other two versions have the DVD and the black version, the special um, members version also has a one-sided record called La, which I don't know if I'm assuming that's different than the La put out years later, which I have, I have a release, I have a copy of that. So this box, um, well, I have to say that these, um, the work they did was not only um, perfectly reproduced these records in gorgeous jackets, flawless um, production, uh, they sound amazing. So once again, we have another copy of Diasporas, uh, which is this first album, and that was from 79. This is, um, this is the Vinyl On Demand version of Transports, which came out in 1980, second record. Um, that that was also reissued on uh, a lot of these were reissued on CD or first some some of the later ones were issued originally on CD then later on LP but uh, this was also reissued as a 10 inch record um, I do not have this is the only version of this I have and of all the ones that I'm missing I plan on obtaining someday um, uh, his third album from 1984, Un Eclipse Total du Soleil. Uh, this is this is a real one of the hot rarities. That's going to take me a while to get something that's affordable. However, I do have a great version. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. The, these things sound amazing. I, uh, my hats off to Vinyl on Demand. Oh, I I think I didn't mention that this box set was reissued. Um, this version of the set was really reissued in 2017. Um, his fourth, fourth record, which uh, along with Diasporus and Antimortem are my very favorites. And that's something that will, like most fans, it will, the favorite will shift <laughs> as a year, month by month, year by year. But this is uh, 
totally amazing record. And I can't, it's very difficult for me to describe. Um, if you listen and you like, that's all that matters with Tazartes, his fourth record, which came out in 1987. This is the, oh, uh, yeah, Quelque Park Quelquan, I don't know how to pronounce it. This is the 10 inch record that was the, the extra unreleased stuff that came out with this box set. And I do have, I do have the CD version of the third uh, record. It has the bonus track Il Reggio della Befano um, on it and that is the the one record I don't have any vinyl version of it it came out as a very limited numbered uh, edition in 2015 very one of the more expensive ones I will acquire that someday too the next on the offering is Checkpoint Charlie which originally came out on CD in 89 I believe it was reissued uh, later on on CD. And then Holiday's Record released this on, at, in the year 2013 on a double LP. And then reissued it again uh, a year later, 2014, on a double LP. The first uh, Holiday's double, L, double LP of this was 400 copies. This, the clear uh, record version was 150 copies and I believe it's the only double LP that of um, Tazartes. Um, I'll correct myself later as we go through all them. So this one is four sides of approximately 15 minutes each of music. Here's the front, there's the back, Holidays logo. Um, and by the way, most of these I, I uh, purchased, uh, Checkpoint Charlie, most of these I purchased brand new. Um, most of his, um, even vinyl releases, and, and a lot of them are very limited to a few hundred copies, 300 copies, 500 copies. They're not that, most of them aren't that hard, very expensive. Um, you're not going to, you're not going to stumble onto them at your local record shop in the United States or probably anywhere. Um, but online, um, they you know, you can get, I've seen as low as for a lot of these, $15, $20, $25. Um, I, in a lot of cases, I paid just a few dollars more just to get brand new. So uh, most of the uh, records in my Taz Artes collection were purchased new. And um, I, got, I got some good deals. Sometimes I paid a little bit more than I would have to get new. Um, a few cases... Um, you know, the rarer or the harder to find, um, I wasn't able to find new ones, but where you can and where it's, you know, where you can find them and when it's reasonably priced, you, um, anyway, I didn't really, I, I really didn't, I wasn't blown away by Checkpoint Charlie. It, it's it's great. I mean, I love listening to stuff. It's not up there. It's not yet ranked in my top whatever. Next, we come to Voyage a Lambre. I don't know if I pronounced it right. But that was released on CD in 1997. And then uh, reissued on this LP version on hot, release, on hot Released in 2012. Here's the front. And here's the back. And it comes with a printed sheet that comes with it. Nothing on the other side. I have the, the original um, labels have no printing on them. I, I wouldn't be surprised. It's a very limited uh, release. But I do have the, uh, the first CD version of this on its way. At this very moment, a recent purchase on Discogs. So I, I neglected to mention this in my list of favorite Tazart days, and I'm probably going to be repeating that <laughs> as I show each one. Up next, 
we went from his last release in 1997 to this CD only release in 2007 on the Vandevoir, how do you pronounce it? Vandevoir, I don't know how to pronounce the label, 2017 release Gene. Now this was also released uh, by the artist himself as a FLAC or an MP3 download and a lot of a lot of the stuff is available um, for download. I wouldn't consider this my top five but I really I I um, gravitated to this immediately and have to admit that um, this particular CD only release is probably in my opinion the most accessible Gedalia Tassartes release that I'm aware of. Now I've listened to everything so uh, but that's just my opinion. Um, I like it a lot. It resembles a soundtrack. It's a soundtrack for some performance or play, but um, it's it's really good. It's it's very enjoyable. This next one, History Off Music, was um, in the same year, 2007, released on a CD as a CD only release. But also in 2014, Holidays Music, Holidays Records released this limited 350 copies of this record with a printed inner with some art and some information. I can't even read it. Writing's light and tiny. Um, one of the many that I purchased new. So these are, most of these are in pristine condition. History off music. Pretty darn good. How can you not like it? Next for your consideration is Repus Freud. This along with Granny Awards often tops people's most love Tazarte's recordings. And they're they're kind of up there for me too. The, the top. But this came out in 2009 on CD and then in 2011 on this um, has a printed silk screen printed of uh, limited edition 500 copies uh, printed um, uh, vinyl sleeve and <laughs> this is great artwork um, uh, Repus Freud and let's see no insert but it, it does have a very plain um, label, black vinyl. Very, very interesting record. I miss this. This has, Repus Freud has a printed insert that comes with the record. Now we come to the legendary Antimortem LP, which was released in 2010 on Hinterzimmer as, as a CD, but then two years later, uh, on this LP plus 7 inch release printed on silver uh, ink on the jacket uh, no inserts silver labels on black vinyl and unusually this 7 inch uh, reflects the, the labels of the album and has side A has Ave Marie and side B has Ave Marie. I think one of them's like six or seven minutes long or longer and the other one's fairly short. But this is this is up there with um, my favorite of his stuff. And this was released out of Switzerland. So it was a great package. The twelve inch and the seven inch. Next one I have for you is Super Disc on the Sub Rosa label. They released this on CD in 2011 along with a black, 300 copies of a black vinyl version and 300 copies of a gold vinyl version. It is gorgeously printed jacket with Jacques Baracol. How could you not love it right there? David Finesh. 
and of course Gedalia Tazartes. Otherwise, it wouldn't I wouldn't be showing it to you here. So the, I got I happened to I I chose to get the gold version of the disc, which it's kind of yeah I guess it's gold super disc with the artwork on there. Really good stuff, especially if you're a fan of any one or more of the three artists listed here. Um, a great find. Still pretty easy to get. Well, like I said, you can't go into a mom and pa shop on Main Street and just stumble on this. But it's out there. It's on, I believe it's on Forced Exposure, uh, obviously Discogs, and other places. Well, the very much talked about Grainy Awards record that this came out, no CD, no other version of it. This is the only way you can get it other than the download, the MP3 download. And it came out, came out on, uh, in 2011 on Alga Martin. This is the only release of it uh, on an LP, no CD, no reissue yet. Um, Grainy Awards. Um, I believe this is an Italian copy. Yes, released in Italy. Granny Awards. Darn good album. It will grow to be one of your favorites too. The Coda Lunga is an interesting release. The only version of it on the Vaughn label released out of Italy 2012 comes in a vinyl plus what you get with it is a DVD same artwork DVD of like home movies in India so I'm passing over that lightly it's a little bit more than that um, so Kota Lunga limited edition 500 copies um, has a printed inner sleeve. And this one is often talked about. But which of his records isn't? So this is basically a DVD. Pop it in the DVD player. I believe it's, it's probably PAL. Yes, it's in a PAL format, but if you have an NTSC PAL player like I do, it's the only way to go. You can play it. Before I continue, we have uh, two guests joining me for this rec my record collection thing. It's Kuma and his buddy Coco, who decided to camp out on the table where I'm displaying the records. The next presenting to you is GOL, I don't know if it's GOL or GOL, and Gedalia Tezartes. Uh, the record is Alps. It's a record only release. There's nothing else available, even digitally at all, for this. Um, on the Planum Records, released out of Italy, although the there's a sticker on there that says Made in Germany. Um, so Alps, very, um, very hard cover, uh, very hard cardstock. There's the, the record labels, and I believe there's an, a printed insert. Here's the artwork, and here's the other side of the artwork with credits on it. So Gaul and Gedalia, they go together. I don't know if I remember to mention that this was released in 2013. Okay, we have another vinyl only release, released in no other format is LA. That's L-A, capital L-A. So I don't know if it's L-A or LA. Um, released 2014 on a label D but inter ambience out of Norway to 500 copies so once again a limited release there's artwork 
on the labels. Really good record. La, L.A. Here's another vinyl only release. And this is a split. Gedalia Tazartes, La Bar Mitzvah Duchin. So I guess that has something to do with dog, bar mitzvah, I don't know. And the other side is upside down. It's Gedalia and Lalo Tazartes, Don't Cry For Me, Mama. And it looks like uh, infantile or very, very young art, but who knows? Don't want to be insulting anyone by saying that because it could have been made by an adult, who knows? So uh, here is the label for her. Don't Cry For Me with a surprise and also a surprise for the Bar Mitzvah side. And this was uh, released on Bisou um, out of France. 2015 vinyl only the next one is Carp's Head and it's another standalone it only came out in this release Gedalia has done another collaboration this time with Pavel Romanzuk uh, Andres Zeluski I, I'm sure I pronounced them wrong Carp's Head there's the back of the record There's it was released on Monotype Records out of the U.S. Limited Edition, only 300 copies. Here is the label on black vinyl, no insert. And here is the CD, the CD version of it. And it has a bonus track on the CD, which is, keep in mind the CD releases. Although this comes together, when you buy one, you get both. Um, a number of the Tazartes releases, um, the CD releases have extra material on them. And here's a, I found a second copy, still sealed, because I got it very inexpensively, and it's going to be used as a trader copy. Here's another standalone vinyl only release, released on Ultra Eczema out of Belgium in 2016, limited to 300 copies. And this is a another collaboration of Tezartes, printed on nice heavy cardstock, looks like recycled paper. And it has um, collaboration with Chris Corsano and Dennis Typus. Um, now, here is the label art. Um, I did Forgot when I got this copy. Um, there's two inserts that come with it, and they weren't with this copy, and that was my mistake for not checking with the seller uh, since it was listed as almost new or something like that. I didn't even um, think about it. I usually ask questions like that before I purchase them, and I guess I'll live without the two inserts until the inserts show up someday, somehow. Okay, here's another vinyl only release and this one is Shulevi Maker which is I'm, I read as a play on words of the Shoemaker Levy comment comment and it's, another, it's a um, collaboration with Gedalia Tazartes and Maya Donitz it's released 2017 on Holotype Editions out of Greece there's the front cover pretty dramatic um, the back, fairly plain, with just some information on it. Side A, side B, and no inserts. Labels are pretty plain on black vinyl. Okay, now we get into the neighborhood of singles and EPs. There are two listed on Discogs, and this one is... The, I don't have the CD version, which was released, I believe, in 2006. This was released on Holiday Records in 2016 out of Italy. And it's a very heavy stock with embossed. And I forgot to mention some of the other records had embossing um, on the front cover for the name. It's got six songs, and the name of the record is Five Rimbaud, One Verlaine. 
And I, I happen to really, I like this one right off the bat. Um, this is one of the records first listen, fell in love with it. And they're kind of, sort of, kind of like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, like rockish songs set to, obviously, I think we can guess whose lyrics they might be set to. Um, but anyway, a great record. This is a recent um, acquisition. All right, the last in the singles EP uh, category is the La Danseuse de la Plus. I don't know if I pronounced that right or not. This CD was released on Alga Magnum, 2006, out of Italy. And it's a mini CD. has four short tracks. Four tracks. Assassin 1, Assassin 2, Assassin 3. And instead of being a real mini CD, it's kind of like a mini CD set <laughs> in a CD blank. or I don't know what that's called. So, um, really good stuff, though. This is... Um, it says released in Italy, but the sticker says made in Germany. And I happen to really like this. Really good. All four songs. We're going to wrap this up with two records of a project that bears the name of Reigns de Angleterre, which I believe translates to Queen of England. And uh, there's two LPs that Gedalia is part of and this will print on a very like heavy canvas um, textured stock with it says spot varnish I don't know if that's spot varnish but it's certainly embossed Les Camores this is the first one I believe it's a live recording it's released on Bow Weevil 2010 out of the UK and this comes with um, it's limited to 400 this is hand numbered let me set this down. And number, here's the insert. This is 130 of 400. A lot of the Tazarte's records I have are limited, but not all of them are numbered. And the label art's pretty simple there. It says A, and I bet you the other side says B, and I'm right. How about that? And the other Reigns the Angleterre record is, is a white copy, same type of. This one is Globe a Dynasty. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. And this is once again a very heavy canvas like finish with embossed. It's hard to even see. Um, this was released 2012. On Bull Weevil once again, out of the UK once again, and it's numbered uh, 191 out of 500. Here's the insert that you could barely read the writing on it, but there's the numbering, and I will show you the record, which I'm not surprised the the labels have no printing on them whatsoever. So. That's it. Um, hope you've enjoyed sharing my Gedalia Tezartes with you. It's been a pleasure. It's more of a pleasure listening to them on a very regular basis. Something I haven't done in a long time to records. I am actually um, rarely a completist, usually with a lot of artists or bands, I want to get all the stuff that I like by them or, you know, certain years, certain releases. Uh, but with Tez Artes, I'm probably going to end up being a completist and get every version of every release, not the FLAC or MP3 downloads, not really into that. Um, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Give me your feedback. Which is your favorite uh, Tez Artes record? Uh, I will be doing updates, maybe videos when I receive more versions of his records, and there are more to get. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching again. Talk to you later. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.